I want to tell a little, little story here. Um, let's talk a little bit more about Portland and a little about, about doing. Um, Lauren Lessig of Creative Commons gave this fantastic talk at OzCon in 2002 here, here in Portland uh, about the expansion of copyright and software patents and the war on file sharing and the damage this was doing to us as programmers and as a culture. And so I've, I've been up here and I've been talking for a while. And so I'm actually just going to run a clip of, of this talk. Um, and so it's about a minute and a half. And I think this is, this is the climax, climax of this, this fantastic, fantastic speech. And uh, we've not done anything yet. A lot of energy building sites and blogs and slash dot stories, nothing yet to change that vision in Washington. Because we hate Washington, right? Who would waste his time on Washington? But if you don't do something now, this freedom you built, that you spend your life coding, this freedom will be taken away. Either by those who see you as a threat, who then invoke the system of law we call patents, or those who take advantage of the extraordinary expansion of control that the law of copyright now gives them over innovation, either of these two changes through law will produce a world where your freedom has been taken away. And if you can't fight for your freedom, you don't deserve it. But you've done nothing. There's a handful. We can name them. The people you could be supporting, you could be taking. Like just, you know, here, just take, just put this in perspective. <clears throat> How many people have given to EFF? Okay. How many people have given to EFF more money than they give to their local telecom to give them shitty DSL service? And so I think that's a really good question, right? And so what, what have we done? What have we done to fight, fight for freedom in this digital age? And his answer seems to be that we're supposed to give money to the EFF. I love the EFF. Believe I know there's some EFF members here. I think they do fantastic, fantastic work. Don't get me wrong. But I have a kind of a problem with that, that sort of our participation in our fight for our freedom is to give, to give a money, to write a check. That's a, that's a bumper sticker culture. You write a check, you get a bumper sticker, you put it on your car. That's your politics. And so what I want to do is compare this situation to, to an organization called the Pirat Biran, which, and so at right around the same time, Sweden was dealing with much the same issues of copyright law and patents and IP. Uh, and so Pirat Biran was a disorganization. They described themselves as a conversation or a think tank um, advocating for piracy uh, and the rights of file sharers. And so they actually went out and protested. Like hundreds of hundreds of people marched around Stockholm and Gothenburg and, and protested for what they believed to be their future. Um, and so they not only said, we want the file sharing rights that we've had, and we want to keep that status quo, but they went further. And they demanded 100 megabit internet to their homes. All right. He said social, their phrase was social welfare begins at 100 megabit. It's crazy, right? And so they, aside, from, aside from making these, these demands, um, they also built things. And so they built a whole lot of different things. Um, and some of them worked and some of them didn't. But one of the things that came out of this movement, out of this conversation, was the Pirate Bay. And so they went out and not only said, we want we want file sharing rights. They actually built a tool that showed to the, the people in Sweden why this is relevant and what a free and open internet can actually do. And as a consequence, they won. They won. I, I had the opportunity to visit Sweden. And for $30 a month in every major city, most of the small ones, it's a fairly sparsely populated country, there is bi-directional 100 megabit connection to your house, to your house. Not only do they have one of the most relaxed, 
copyright regimes in the world. They have, as a consequence of these actions, some of the fastest internet. And if you just think, you think sort of, compare that to what's in the States, where 30 bucks gets you a meg and a half, maybe three, just what, what that kind of connectivity makes possible. The other thing is that it even gets even better, is that in 2006, they started a political party called, called the Pirate Party. And they've even been successful enough that they now have two MEPs. They have two Swedish members of the Pirate Party sit in the governing parliament of Europe. And so I look at what's happened in Sweden, I look at what's happened in the States, and it's just hard, hard to not draw some comparisons. And I think the moral of this allegory is that direct action gets the goods. Is that by going out and just doing, and putting our hands and our skills and our voices and our feet to work directly in service of whatever that goal is we want to achieve works better. It works better than writing a check. You know, Gandhi said that we should be the change we want to see in the world. Um, that rather than waiting around for someone to come save us, we should just go out and start today. And so in Egypt, Telecomics did exactly this. We didn't call up Obama to call Hillary, to call Mubarak, to say, please turn the internet back on. Please turn the internet back on. No, we just busted out some modems and some fax machines and whatever it is we had and we could find and could put together to make communication possible. And so, like I said, I was at this other conference in the UK two weeks ago, and I went to this event called You Can Cut. And so You Can Cut organizes independently on Twitter um, and are protesting basically large companies, Vodafone, large retailers who don't pay their taxes and so are causing the kind of destruction of the NHS and the British social welfare system. And so this woman actually, at the end of her talk, takes half of, half of the audience and we march down the street and go into a Vodafone office and do a protest right there. And we actually even finish the talk in, in this Vodafone office kind of at the protest, right? And so, yeah, they're getting some attention. They're getting some coverage. Um, just rather than just complaining, they are showing kind of what could be possible. And so I think that the internet here, if we want it to be a tool for social justice or a tool for freedom or whatever it is we want to do with it, needs to be more than just an echo chamber. We need to do more than just post stories on our blogs and Twitter and Slashdot. If the only outlet we have is online, we're shouting in vain. Sometimes you need to just get outside and get your message out. Right? There's this echo chamber effect. Right? We're all plugged in. We follow the people we follow on Twitter. We read the sites we read. And sort of, how can we go out and advocate for what we need and what we believe is right to people who are not listening? And so let's talk about surveillance. Let's talk about surveillance and politics. And so I understand that we are anxious about going out and protesting and being political in the face of this so much surveillance. Right? These cameras are just everywhere. And to say nothing of the photos that people take ourselves, right, and that wind up in, on Facebook. And I'd like to quote a woman named Sherry Turkle. She wrote a fantastic book called Alone Together about sociology and the internet and kind of what it, what it is cell phones and all these things are doing to our culture. And she quotes this young man who says, the internet definitely makes you think about going to a protest. You can't tell where the pictures would show up. And I think we worry about that. I mean, even those of us who are older and a little more active, right, we're afraid. And I think we have reason to, to be, sometimes. If that's a problem for you, I understand. So put on a mask, right? If you're afraid of your face showing up, put on a mask. If you don't like this mask, there are lots of other masks, OK? <laughs> but no more excuses. 
What can you do? What can you do? You can protest, you can ride a bike, grow a garden, hack code, call your mom, I don't care. I don't care. But do something. The government, the corporations, are not going to make this world better for us. And we cannot keep relying on someone else to fix it for us. We need to start doing this ourselves. It's better that way. It's better that way. Because that way, we have direct input into the sort of world we want to live in. If you join the bureaucracy, what can you do? Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Please pirate this talk.